Thanks for joining the channel. Hey, if you've ever looked at binoculars and wondered what 8x42, 10x50, depth of field, and all of the functions that go with the binocular, what makes them good or bad, this episode's for you, so stay with us. Hi, this is Tim and Dole. Welcome to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumbasses. A podcast about the outdoors, hunting, and being a steward of the land. Hey, if you like what these two dumbasses are doing, please hit the like button and subscribe today. Hey folks, uh, welcome back. So in this episode, Tim, we're going to be talking about binocular basics. We're certainly not experts at this but we've done a lot of research as you can tell we own a several more than one counts as several and this is 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 probably uh, i know i have some stash somewhere else too yeah um, and i've owned several in the past but um, we're going to just kind of go through some of the basics on binoculars and uh, and talk through them but before we do that yeah let's let's talk a little bit about our customer customer service segment so as Joel and I have been starting to do is, is if, hey, if we've got something from a customer service perspective, we want to put a spotlight on that. And mine is around uh, dead downwind. So this is on the last one I think we did was more of a positive customer experience on the ozone. And uh, this is on the other side of that coin. Not so good. Not so good. So I was preparing for season this year and I, I, I pretty much have a, a routine and I go through my products pretty quickly. And, uh, and you and I both are in customer, man, or, uh, customer products manufacturing backgrounds. And so customer service usually is pretty impeccable when it comes to CPG type items. Anyway, I go and I pull out and I'm, I'm pouring out of my refill container into my spray, spray container for my my dead downwind, you know, scent eliminator. And I noticed that there were some floaties in it. So upon further reviews, a lot of mold in this thing. So, so I thought, you know what, normally I don't take the time and I just bite the bullet, but this time I thought, you know what, I, the customer, I'm going to send something to them. So I took the time, took pictures, ended up being like five sets of emails back and forth from dead downwind. And at the very end, they basically said, Sir, that, that product's five years old. We don't warrant it. We only warranty it to three years. You're gonna have to take that back to the, they asked me where I bought it and it was a year ago. So they said, hey, you gotta take it back. So I was pretty frustrated with it all. First of all, if you go and look at the container and we'll provide pictures of that, there was no expiration date on this at all. They, they have a uh, code date that's on the bottom of the bottle that you know no normal person will be able to interpret. Uh, best before date. There's no best before date. Um, now they basically put the work back on me. And also now it's clear that, hey, they're not turning their products out in the store. So I would have bought this last year. So it was already expired before I bought it or very little shelf life. So dead downwind. I am, uh, while I've used their products, shampoo and uh, descenting eliminator, I'm done. That dead downwind is dead. Dead, to you. dead, dead to me. To you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know the sad thing with that is is for 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 their cost. You it's know nothing. whoever that cost is, the goodwill associated to it, right? So uh, that's unfortunate. Sorry to hear that, man. Yeah, I mean on my on the fourth set of emails, she asked for some pictures, and the pictures I gave her were in the first email that I provided. It was just, uh, and that was their senior customer service representative. Just as a heads up. Sorry, sorry to hear that. But on the positive, let's talk a little bit about our store on the positive side. Yeah, positive side. So we've been doing a lot of work. Uh, so I'm actually wearing our very first T-shirt, and we've come a long way. Uh, so if you if you go out and look at our Teespring store, I think we've embedded in all of our episodes, um, and I think we got an episode coming up on that. Yeah, we've, we've got an episode. Sure. If you want to just kind of look at a demonstration what the store looks like, you can actually go in and, and look at that. Um, and then we have the link down below in the description if they want to go into the store. Yeah. So I think you go out there. We have some classic, some very classic uh, gear that we had with our original logo that we started off with. Not this one, but other, other uh, classic logos. And then we've came out with some other logos. We've got a premium hoodie out there. 
We've got another, I, would, I don't want to call it a cheap hoodie, but probably mid, mid-range hoodie. Uh, we've got some glasses. We've got uh, T-shirts, hats. We got some hats now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I encourage if uh, if you want to find a way to support us, go out and take a look at that store, and and uh, you'll find some cool stuff. And if you do end up purchasing, we really do appreciate your support. Yeah, yeah, it's good. You did a great job on that. Thanks for all the work that you put into that. It looks it looks super. So. Right. But we'd love to hear your feedback. That's really why we're doing it. This is to get our feedback from you folks, and then get our merchandise and wares out there, right? hundred so. percent. So Joel, we've done a, you've done a lot of work in prepping for this episode and we're going to talk binoculars 101. Uh, why don't you, why don't we get into the episode? Yeah, Tim, I think the, you know, what I, what I have learned over the years myself about binoculars and what reading into this, um, I think step one in binoculars is if you're considering getting different binoculars or, or buying some binoculars, really really important to understand how you're going to be using them so for example if you're going to be using them to look at uh you know stars at night and or you're going to a moose hunt in alaska one in a t- once in a lifetime or you're going you know you're just general deer hunting like we would do um it, bird watching etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, it's super important to understand how you're going to use them uh, because there's a lot of features and functions, and when you get to a point on binoculars, you know, you're talking about some of the percentages of improvement uh, can be hundreds or thousands of dollars. For sure. So, you know, take some time, write it down. What are you going to be using for is, is kind of step one is what we're, we're always going to go back to on this. But I think the easiest place to step, uh, to step into binoculars is let's talk about... Uh, the functions or the parts of a binocular. So we've got different binoculars in front of us here, and um, let's let's talk about them. So they all have uh, a front glass and a back glass. The front glass is called the objective lens, and the back part is is called the ocular lens. So a good way of remembering that is uh, you know objects closer to you, closer to the binoculars. So I. Ocular and objective, and then most binoculars are going to have a uh, diopter setting. And what's that? What is that used for? Is 33% or about a third of Americans have some type of eye stigmatism? I have it, I know for sure. So, what that means is my left eye and my right eye um, are not the same focus length and and different um, vision out of each one. By having that dioptic setting on your binoculars on one of your lenses, you're able to compensate for that stigmatism and see uh, perfectly clear through the binoculars. Pretty important, really important. So that's that's a piece of it. Other than that, you know, do you need, if you wear glasses, you know, cups, eye cups can be super important. Uh, you know, on your, on your binoculars here, you've got uh, rubber, attached um, covers for the lenses. You know, um, my Leopolds here have eye, eye cups on them that you can adjust up and down. But, um, you know, the big, the big thing is, you know, focus. What's the focus um, opportunity on these? The diopter and then uh, lenses. So that, that's it. And then um, there's really two types of constructions of binoculars. So if you can hand me that uh, Bushnell here, um, tube, tube style binoculars where you've got a tube where you look in one end of the tube and you got objective lenses on the other um, is, is called a roof prism binocular. Uh, there's really no advantage or disadvantage to this style versus the other style, which is called a poro prism. And it's, think of a dog leg. So this has got a, a jog in it. Really no advantage or disadvantages to it. Um, advantage to the Poro style is it does give you a little more depth of field when you're looking through it. It gives you a little more three-dimensional, a little more realism. Uh, but some of the higher end manufacturers really lean towards the roof prism style of binoculars because from a manufacturing standpoint, um, they can... Uh, they can simpl- simplify it 
and uh, put better glass in here. And then the tubes can be lighter material, aluminum um, types of material and uh, lighten it up to kind of compensate for that glass weight. So anyway, that's uh, the two, two types or descriptions of binoculars that you're going to see out there when you start looking at them. You know, you started, and I don't want to get ahead of you, but you started talking about the higher end. There's, there's really three, three kind of levels of binoculars, right? I mean, when you talk price. Yeah. Right? So uh, that entry level, entry level you can get in. Uh, then you have that mid-range and then that, that premium premium level and and we don't even need to tell you you go out and look at price and you'll be able to quickly find out when, which ones are falling to which yeah and i think you know i what i would encourage folks to do is get the binoculars that you're interested in look through them in the store look through them you know wherever you can and uh compare and contrast them because uh, there is there are three thousand, four thousand dollar binoculars out there, and then there's five dollar binoculars, right? So big difference, too. yeah, yeah. How are you? Did you t say Swarovski? Did you say Swarovski? Not yet. Okay, keep, no, go keep going. We're going to talk Go through some of the brands here in a minute. But, okay. Um, so then, uh, one of the first things you're going to look at and really may have to make a decision on is what's the magnification of these. Uh, binoculars that you're looking for and again this all goes back to what are you going to be using them for so this set of binoculars is I think we said was 9 by 40 so what that means is the first number is a magnification when you look through this it's going to magnify what you're looking at nine times closer than you would with your normal eye and then the 40 represents 40 millimeters for the objective lens that's in your um, binoculars uh, so, some things on the mag magnification, first of all. Um, the lower the magnification, obviously, the further it looks away. But there's a point where you get to higher magnification. For me, it's about 10 or 12. And that's, in my research, that's probably the number that I've, I've read most about. That it's hard to stabilize the binoculars with your hands or even if you're bracing it. Um, above 10 or 12 without some type of... A tripod or a brace so just keep that in mind if you're gonna get uh, you know a 20 by 50 or something like that um, to go on your boat or a look at stars at night you're definitely gonna need some type of binocular holder or tripod or something to keep the stabilization um, in check the uh, significance of the objective size of the objective lens obviously the bigger the lens the more light that can come through this is allowed through this and uh, you know the clearer that the object you're looking at is um, going to be the downside is is more weight and bigger size you know this is a 9 by 40 this is a leopold 10 by 26 so significantly different uh, look um, but you can see that the difference in the in the in the lens objectives is uh, the objective lens is significant. So you're not going to see nearly as well at dusk or in the morning um, as you would with these these nine by forties. So other things to Tim to consider when you're looking at at binoculars is you're going to see and read in this term called field of vision. Field of vision is how far can I see width wise at a thousand yards looking at through the binoculars that's mostly dictated by the magnification number but not always so uh, for example the if you had a 10 by 40 binoculars you were looking out things are going to look 10 times bigger and you're going to be able to see approximately 390 yards from left to right on the on the field of vision that can be significantly important depending on what you wanted you know what you're using them for other factors are the dimensions and the weight we talked about that um, for the most part the better the glass the heavier and dense it, dense it is so the the higher the weight of the binoculars manufacturers try to offset that with with some of the other parts that they put on that 
Waterproof, fog proof. My experience is there's no such thing as fog proof. Um, I, I haven't found it anyway, any glasses, but a lot of the binoculars will claim that they are fog proof. Um, and, but I do think it's super important to have waterproof ones. Yeah. Uh, low light capability. Um, and that's, we'll get a little bit more into that. And then, uh, with low light capability, you're going to see two significant advertised terms. One is called ED and the other one's HD. And um, ED is extra low dis dispersion. And uh, what that is, is if, um, the, if you have the binoculars with ED coating on them, the, it's gonna make the image that you're looking at clearer around, specifically around the edges. Mm. And then high definition, HD is high definition, is gonna is supposedly allow more light into it so you can see the image clear. The watch out here is there's no standard, there's no one, there's no authority on these. Yeah, you could you could literally you and I can make a set of binoculars and say, hey, they're ED and HD, and there's nothing legal illegally about that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So a lot of marketing. That's the watch out. Um, price point and value again. Uh, what I talked about is, is you can get to a point where uh, you can make significant differences in these binoculars to a point, and then the, the price point per improvement gets really big. Dramatic. 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 And then if you're an eyeglass wearer, make sure that you're going to try these glasses out because that focal length between your glasses um, and your eyes and then the, the binoculars is going to be a big deal and the number one complaint on binoculars. So make sure that you're trying them on. Yeah, so I'm going to go in on that. So there's a couple things on these binoculars. So you and I have, so these are both Steiners. Yep. Right? So one of the nice things about these Steiners is, is for my glasses, if you're wearing glasses, I can roll those down and I can change that distance. Now, this is, a, this is easily 20-year-old binoculars. And uh, I still love them, by the way. So yours has this, that same feature. Uh, and... These Bushnells also have that feature, not that roll down, but they actually have something in here to where it actually compensates for glasses. So it's a pretty big deal because I see in the future me having glasses. Yeah, yeah, and, and the Leopolds here, um, I don't know if the Bushnells are the same, but they have these Extendo exactly uh, eye cups. I don't wear glasses um, when I use binoculars, but man, I really like these eye cups, and I didn't realize that you could you know, I just thought they were trying to make it smaller, uh, but you can actually adjust these, you know, to any any length that you want. It's so. a big deal. Yeah, yeah. You know, comfortability is a big deal, and then how you focus them. Different focus. There's on the Leopold here. You got one focus, one focus knob on the Steiners, um, and I love my Steiners, uh, but you focus them by two different focuses on the. Uh, eyepieces here yep so a little bit different um i i like the idea of being able to focus with one but um i really like the steiners to uh for adjustment standpoint so uh and if you're going to get into this if we think about manufacturers of glass is there any place in the world that has the best glass yep researching glass um uh germany is the leader in glass manufacturers for binoculars and optics. really it's yeah optics in general microscopes and and telescopes and etc but for binoculars germany is number one and then you know followed very closely by japan and then obviously there's some united states manufacturers that are up in the top ranks but there's a lot of manufacturers out there that make very bad glass china uh, Taiwan, et cetera, et cetera. And then honestly, I was surprised that uh, some manufacturers, some binoculars have actual plastic lenses in them. Really? So be careful what you're, what you're looking for. Yeah, so I mean, I know, so I, but like I said, this was my first set of binoculars. I probably bought, like I said, it was my first elk cut. And uh, I did exactly what you suggested. 
first thing is, is hey, what, what do I want? What's my price point? How am I going to use it most specifically? And as you go out and start to look at, at them, uh, huge disparity in price. And I would say huge disparity in performance. And at the time, at the time when I bought these, German glass, it was the top of the mid-range. And it's what I could afford, probably still what I can afford, uh, or that I want to afford. But I, the glass on these babies are really good. It's neat. Um, you know, I, it, just, just point out some of the things that we, we've talked about with the glass. I mean, you can feel the weight in, in this, right? Uh, but here's another thing with the, the coating on your glass. If you can see the lenses on these, uh, significantly different, you know, coating. This, this probably doesn't have any coating, and this has an anti-glare coating. Even though they're Steiner, um, a lot of things you're going to get out there, and you really have to go through the weeds and say, what's beneficial to you mm -hmm. and what's just marketing? Um, and coating is going to be one of those things. Comfortability, type of glass. Um, shock resistance. Shock resistance. You know, I, I think the warranty that these manufacturers provide you to tells a, a lot. So a lot of a lot of the mid-range to higher-end manufacturers provide a lifetime warranty on them. That, that, that says a lot Yep. Um, compared to, uh, you know, year or whatever. But um, questions, Timbo? Well, you know, I'm going to, when we were talking about this, I was just thinking about things that I looked at. So we just talked about glass and warranty. Uh, I think your functionality, I think spot on, there are just so many things that they're starting to add now for functionality, you know. So they now, the, the higher end ones are thermography, right? So oh, wow. heat, heat seeking yeah. on your binoculars. Um, they also have cameras that are embedded right in your, that you can build right into your can into your binoculars. Um, but, uh, there was one other one. Oh, range finding, right? So range finding is another, another thing. So, Hey, I carry a range finder and set of binoculars. Boy, it'd be nice to carry one. Right. Um, and again, just like you talked about huge price disparity, depending on model, manufacturer and the function so uh and if, I can build, if i can build on that um so they, they actually make binoculars with zoom functions on them also that you can go from three to 20 let's say um on the zoom so the watch out on this all all of these functions um laser range finding zoom etc cetera, etc cetera, is um it, you know it a lot of times they bundle things together and it's kind of like beer beer's good blueberries are good but blueberry beer is nasty shit right so um binoculars are good range range finders are good but sometimes when you put things together you're not getting the best of both worlds and you're not happy with the final product um so well everything i've read laser range finders we're going to do uh, an episode on this this pair of binoculars so i'm excited to see that and hear that but for sure what everything i've read and seen if you get a pair of binoculars that have the zoom function on them that you're not going to be happy with it so yeah. it'd be great i think it'd be a great uh, uh, an option but uh man I, again compare and compra c contrast is the biggest thing on these binoculars yeah try a lot uh like you said there's tons of great manufacturers i mean U.S. wise, we got Vortec, we have Bush now, Leopold, right? Um, but German glass, German. Like uh, Zeiss, uh, Saworski are kind of the top end. You know, Nikon, Bushnell, Steiner, uh, Vortex. Uh, you know, you can be, people can place those where they want. They have different models, of course, different quality of glass. But there is. Got to be a thousand different names of binoculars out there if you get on Amazon for sure. Yeah, and hopefully, I mean, this is really meant to help demystify binoculars and what you're looking for and help you in making your decision. I think if, if you have any other questions, they could easily email us and for perspective it, or uh, put in the comments, right? Yeah, absolutely. If you have any questions on the binoculars that we have, we're more than willing to answer. Uh, but if you have general questions, put them in the comments there and... You know, we'll do our best, and again, we're not claiming to be experts, but um, some experience with binoculars and certainly in the research that we've done.
hundred percent. Yeah. Well, Tim, I think we knocked out another episode here. So till yeah. next time. Nice job. Yeah. Be, Be safe, safe, have, have fun, fun, and, and get, get outdoors. outdoors. Thanks for listening or watching our show. We have some exciting topics and guests coming up. We ask that you subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We look forward to hearing your suggestions for topics, questions, and comments. This is Two Dumbasses signing off. Until next time, be, be safe, safe, have, have fun, fun, and, and get, get outdoors. outdoors.